Are we podcasting? Yeah, we're back. We're back in the building. Uh, all right, so let's just come clean. We did start this podcast once, and then I forgot to get the cutter. Yeah. So uh, this is take two. He cut me off mid-flow, but I'll do the best I can to re uh, recuperate. <laughs> Hello, Jed. Hi, John. How's things? It's uh, I'm really good. Living the dream. How are you? Yeah, not so bad. Uh, I'm excited for this podcast. Uh, I see you going for a sip of your coffee. I hope it's a bit stronger than last week. It's better this week. Mm. It's better. It's acceptable. It's better than that pond water you gave me last week. <laughs> Cheers. It's a, running, <laughs> it's a running issue that Jed has is that he can't seem to make a solid cup of coffee. But he's obviously been taking lessons because this one's much improved. <laughs> Lots of YouTube tutorials. <laughs> Staying up late at night. Furious of yourself that you couldn't impress me with your coffee skills. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'll be watching the makeup tutorial so I can look as pretty as you. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, yeah, I, no, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, as we were just alluding to before we put the camera on, I uh, <coughs> by the time we got to the end of the podcast, I don't want it to end. Um, mm, I yeah. often feel like lighting up a second cigar just yeah. so we can keep chatting about cigars. Yeah. Um, and I was also saying how I always feel like I, I didn't make the most of the the moment. Yeah, because I really have fun doing these podcasts. In fact, I have more fun doing these than the cigar reviews. Yeah, definitely. Because they're a little bit more in depth, a little bit more involved. Yeah, they flow easier. Yeah, they flow easier. I also feel sometimes I'll, I'll we'll finish and then I'll be driving home and I'll go, oh, I wish I'd said that. Yeah. Because that we usually we'll, we'll we'll get up on a subject that we'll start discussing and I'll realise afterwards that there's so much more I want to say. Yeah. Um, which is the beauty of this kind of long format kind of thing. Yeah. Like podcasting, though, isn't it? Exactly. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll start cranking them out to two and three hour double cigar podcasts. Who knows? I'd love that. So uh, today we are smoking the Davidoff Churchill, the late hour. Um, five and a quarter inches. With a 52 ring gauge, it looks like a beautiful cigar. Yeah, the roll looks great. And I was just admiring the, the bands, actually. I quite like, they're mostly black. They've got a, a monochrome feel to them um, with a golden Churchill silhouette above the Davidoff logo and then a second band that, with the name of the cigar, the Late Hour on it. Looks cool, doesn't it? It does. They're a bit special, these, aren't they? There's something there. Uh... They are, yeah. Um, I'll just touch on the fact that last week we were talking about our top three cigars and we wanted to find something to break into our top three because our top three was all Cuban. Yeah. So when I went into the store, I looked at non-Cuban cigars around the same price bracket as our top three Cubans. These came in at 30 pounds for for these cigars. Um, and in fact, was it yesterday we went to Windsor? Yeah. Uh, and we were talking to Ross. Yeah. And he was telling us about how the tobacco within these cigars aged for six months and single malt whiskey casks. Nice. So it is almost a bit of a flavour infused cigar and it is an acquired taste. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how that dimension comes out in the tobacco. Mm. Um, so I'm, I like to pair things with cigars and obviously the traditional thing that people seem to do is whiskey. Mm. But as you know, whiskey is not my favourite tipple. Mm. Um, if I'm going to drink spirits, I much prefer rum. And if I'm going to drink alcohol, I much prefer wine. Yeah. Uh, but I'll be interested to see what notes of whiskey come through. From yeah. The tobacco being sat in single malt cask for six months. I think it's going to be good. Well, just dry on the nose. It's not very offensive. No, it's not. And anything different about the scar that you would attribute to whiskey, any sweetness, mm. it's almost background. Yeah. And I must say, these came out of the little cellophane, you know, they were individually wrapped in cellophane. Oh, okay. And even when I popped them open, it didn't hit me with any, you know, strong scent of whiskey or even tobacco for that matter. Yeah, they're light on the they're nose. Very, they're very, very subtle, but... <laughs> I'm going to cut the, into this and, yeah. uh, and see... Get them started. Get them started and see how we get on. I'm going to go a different way around it and light mine before I cut it. Mm, controversial. I saw a video online... And I think it was a Davidoff video. Interesting. And the guy swore by lighting the cigar first and then cutting it. Really? Yeah. Did he say why he thought that was a good idea? He did, and I can't exactly remember. I think it was something... You know how we don't hold a cigar in our mouths and light it at the same time because you don't want to produce too much heat? Yeah. It was something to do with that. 
Interesting. I wonder how much of this stuff, but some of it makes a lot of sense, yeah. right? Um, from perhaps a physics perspective. But I wonder how much of it's splitting hairs. Mm. Because whatever you get from lighting the cigar with the cap on or off must really be minimal. I think you've got to be a, a seasoned cigar smoker to really tell the difference. To appreciate the minor difference if there is one. Yeah, I, I'd be interested in knowing, you know, if, if this guy, if that guy I'm talking about was sitting in front of us, if we gave him a cigar that we lit before we cut it, would he know the difference? So between... blind test the guy. Yeah. I'd very much like to do that. So I've got the end of this nice and heated up now. But without, before I've even taken a draw, I like the smoke just in the air. I was about to say the same thing. Let's see, uh, see how the draw is. Very quickly, the, the one mistake I have made, this is the second time I've lit a cigar before I've cut it. Mm -hmm. And where I got into the habit of cutting the cigar and then lighting it, yeah. when I don't do that, on this second occasion I don't do that, when I go for my first draw, it's then I go... Oh, the draw's a bit tight. And then I realise... <laughs> you haven't I'm, cut the sky. I've yet. not cut it yet. <laughs> the draw on this is very easy. Very free-flowing. I'm just cutting mine now. And I haven't... I, I, obviously, I'm always a bit tentative with my cuts to begin with because I'm one of those... You can take it off but can't put it back on kind yeah. of cigar cutters. Um, but wow. I've been quite conservative with the cut and that flows really, really easily. Yep, yeah, mine too. So let's give it a... Uh, a chance to warm up. I can I can feel a difference in it, and obviously, look, I'm not going to judge the cigar at all until I'm nicely warmed up. But I can feel a difference in the type and texture of the smoke. Okay. I think there's a a quite enjoyable bitter element to it. Mm -hmm. And now I think the one we smoked um, last week, the Rocky Patel, where we spoke a lot about peppery flavours and yep. the, the bitter notes on that side of the spectrum, not like that at all. Okay. Like a bitter at the front of the mouth on, on the side of the tongue. Mm. Um, I can tell you what, it's difficult to pinpoint something that's similarity, but I guess it comes from the whiskey. It must have that kind of yeah, that kind of uh, whiskey bite to it. We'll, we'll see what we're thinking in, in a few minutes' time when it's had the chance to heat up and develop a little bit. But like you said earlier, the, the smoke in the air right now smells good. Mm. It smells really nice. It's a, it's a different aroma to the Rocky Patel or the Carrillo that we had. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Yeah, enjoying this so far. So I'm waiting for this to warm up. How was your week, Jed? My week was good. You know me, I've always got a story to tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Usually complaining about something or someone. Um, I had some good news uh, for anyone listening who doesn't know... I create content for companies, for their social media profiles, uh, which is why I'm so passionate about doing it for Cigars London. Um, so I have a meeting booked for next week okay. with a potential client. And I actually went to the store around the corner oh, yeah? where I bought the cigar presses from and I might end up doing some work for them as well. Oh, fantastic. Which is, seen, uh, I think you, I mean, you mentioned these people. They're quite interesting, quirky little... Yeah, yeah, they've got, well, I bought these cigar presses from there, and I've never seen them anywhere in, mm -hmm. in the UK, they're mm -hmm. from Switzerland, um, but essentially the, the owners of the store, they do a lot of travelling, and they bring back quirky little things and sell them in their shop, um, so I took a look at their social media, and it can be improved, Yeah. Uh, so hopefully I can help them with that, uh, other than that, I've just been editing a lot of cigar pictures, and podcasts and videos and everything else generally been creating cigar content mm. for the internet to thrive on yeah good hopefully, for the internet hopefully one day <coughs> wow these are producing some smoke yeah they are indeed hopefully one day Cigars of London will be a full time gig uh, I don't like need to, to worry so. about anyone what about yourself I got bitten by a dog today yeah tell me more <laughs> <laughs> no that's it I'm just going to stop the story there oh fine <laughs> no um, so yeah well obviously you know I have my new puppy Loki, who is a Belgian Malinois. Um, for people who are listening who don't know what a Belgian Malinois is, as most people don't, because they pull a quizzical face when I say Belgian Malinois. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, they're used a lot for police and security and protection dogs. 
if I really had to like it to something, it would be kind of think of a short-haired German Shepherd. But any Belgian Malinois owners out there now are screwing at me for making that, making that reference. Uh, one of the things often people say on the internet is Belgian Malinois because German Shepherds need heroes too. Um, so anyway, I've oh. been uh, attending some training sessions with Loki, um, with a gentleman called Ben, runs a company called SWAT Dogs. Um, and he specializes in all that kind of stuff, right from, you know, general dog obedience training up to protection dogs, close protection work for sort of quite high end clients and that kind of thing. Right. And, and dog sports as well. Um, and a genuinely very nice guy. So today I took a visit to uh, spend some time with Ben and uh, his group of hounds. He has a quite a number of dogs. <laughs> and he offered that he'd let me put a bite suit on to see what it was like to get attacked by his dogs. Was that terrifying? Yes. And yes. <laughs> Every time. Um, so we went, we scrolled through his literary uh, list of dogs um, from a Belgian Malinois to a couple of Spanish Alanos. And if you don't know what a Spanish Alano is, Google it. They're huge, huge, great, powerful dogs. And Ben's dogs are also very well trained that he can set them on somebody wearing a bite suit and then with one word command, the dog will stop and sit there like nothing's happening. I love watching those videos. I've seen some of that stuff on YouTube. It's fascinating. Yeah, and it's, it's very interesting to do. So somehow Ben convinced me to put on a bite suit and, we, and I got bitten. But wow, he, to see the control he has over his dogs and to be on the receiving end of that bite. And as soon as the, the dog latches on to your arm, you realise very quickly why you're wearing the suit. Yeah, I can only imagine how strong they are. Yeah, uh, and the, his his biggest, oldest dog, one of his uh, Alanos, is uh, getting on a little bit now in years, I think kind of seven, eight this summer. And I, I'm six foot one and somewhere in the region of 200 plus pounds. And I was struggling to stay on my feet with this dog on my arm. It, it was incredible. <laughs> So I wouldn't want to be a burglar breaking into Ben's house. They're going to have a bad day. So that was my week. <laughs> but the the training with Loki is going well. And... Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's great. He's very intelligent. Um, he's 16 weeks tomorrow. Uh, so and he's, he's growing rapidly. Yes, he's now five times the weight he was when I bought him. Uh, when I adopted him, he was just under three kilos, and now he's just shy of 15 kilos. I'm not sure. I know how much I weigh in pounds, but but he's he's big for a sixteen week old puppy. Um, so, but yeah, he's taken up a lot of my life at the minute. I, I work and I spend time with my dog. That's and I smoke cigars. Sounds like a bit of a dreamy lifestyle, if it's, you ask me. Life could be worse. Life could be worse. So, how are you feeling about the uh, the smoke so far? Whilst you've been talking, I've been thinking about it and. I don't know, I'm probably half an inch down. I'm unsure yet. Okay. I want to give it a little bit more time. It's not bad. It's not great at the moment. I, I do want to give it a little bit more time. I, I like the I like the aroma in the air. Um, they feel good in the hands. Uh, and what does that mean? Um, it's a good size cigar. Yeah. It gives you it feels you with confidence, you know, it's one of those masculine feeling cigars mm -hmm. um, but let me can I ape like whiskey no I'm not getting elements maybe but it's not in the forefront no um, but I'm I'm tempted to say black coffee there's something on the back of my tongue that's it's quite bitter but I don't know. Personally, it's too it's too early for me to tell. I, I struggle picking out flavours. Again, I'm, I'm only a half inch down the cigar, but I'm enjoying it already. I quite like this. Mm. I do quite like this. I know it's early days with this cigar, but I don't think it's going to break into my top three. Okay. Well, let's see how we roll the time we're on the final third. There's, And I, 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 I used to get a lot of comments from people on, on the YouTube channel saying, oh, how can, you, how can you judge a cigar if you've only just lit it? There's something about a cigar. You know you're going to like it, or you know it, it's just going to be all right. Um, there was one 
I'm, I'm with you on this because sometimes you'll like one and go, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and the one that springs to mind for me for with that was the Partagas Eight Nine Eight. Yes. Yeah. I remember lighting that cigar and going, oh hello. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that cigar because it was one of the smallest ring gauge cigars we had had. Yeah. Um, ahead of the, I mean, now it's probably the. Um, oh dear. Paul Arenaga. Paul Arenaga Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. Yeah. yeah. That that's a great cigar. Uh, it's a great value cigar too. Eleven yeah. eleven pounds, I think they they are yeah, at so the moment, good. and they're amazing. They they slow they they burn nice and slowly. Uh, so you can make it last, and it's just a really good, easy-going afternoon cigar. I reckon I probably smoked about half a dozen of those. Yeah. Never had an issue. Never had a bad mm. one. Never had a bad burn. Um, never had a bad draw, and they're always so enjoyable. And I'm when I smoke to the end of it, I'm I'm gutted that the cigar's about to end. Yeah. Like, I always think I could probably stomach another one of these. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting a little bit whiskey on the retrohale from this. Very subtle. I'm definitely getting the edges of that. I think that whiskey feel. You drink some whiskey and you kind of go a little bit. Yeah. There's the edges of that feel. I'm getting a bit of wood as well. Yeah. It's kind of a a smoke wood. Yes. Smoked. Yeah. Kind of. Not in a bonfire way, but in a kind of oak smoked, mm. cedar smoked kind of feel. Exactly that. Oh. Yeah. This thing has just changed a little bit. See? It's potential. Like, it's got potential, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it definitely has. And we're, 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 well, I'm an inch down. I'm an inch down the cigar now, so. Ooh. I always wonder with these, with stuff like this. So if you have something that's known for a particular characteristic. Uh. characteristic. So let's say, let's say it's developed into something that I would really associate with whiskey, right, yeah. flavour-wise. And again, the part of Cosette 98, right, very opposite ends very creamy very soft and gentle yes. but really flavorful cigar yeah and the same with the monte carlo they're quite extreme characteristics of a cigar mm. i often wonder what that would do to someone as a beginner if that was their if somebody went have one of these <laughs> and that was their first cigar do you know what i mean like i mean the <laughs> odds of somebody being giving a uh, an eight nine eight yeah as a there you go chief here's your first cigar <laughs> Might be unlikely, but do you think it has set a precedent for them? That reminds me of uh, what we, well, I used to bring it up a lot last year in videos. Um, with beginner cigar smokers, I personally would advise a beginner cigar smoker to start at the cheaper end uh -huh. and work their way up. Yeah. Because you don't want to have someone who's just start, just starting uh, or, or wants to be introduced to cigar smoking, you give them a Bolivar Libertador, a 30 pound cigar. Yeah. And then that sets the line. Ah, them. their bar's set really high. Yeah. And then they try something a bit cheaper, maybe like a cheaper non-Cuban and they're like, what on earth is this? Yeah. I think there might be something in that as well, because I think we, we could probably get into this with, with beginner mm. cigar smokers, but. If you, for me, one of the great things about cigars is the variety of flavors and tastes. Yeah. Right? I mean, look, I'm preaching to the choir here. That people aren't smoking them because they don't like the taste of them. Yeah. And the variety is why we all have opinions on different cigars. It's like wine. Um, but I think there's a benefit to smoking perhaps the cheaper end of cigars. Obviously, as a beginner, there's affordability. But they tend to be strong in flavor and quite one-dimensional yeah um so if you go right down the cheap end of the non-cuban market you would take the rocky patel yeah right all right not amazingly cheap but affordable mm. we smoked last week and i could give that to a beginner and let them smoke it and go pepper and then go yeah i get that yeah for sure and you could do that over and over again with different cigars and go this one so what you think you know nothing too complex coffee. exactly and, and it would train your palate, I think, by starting at the lower end and working up to some stuff that's a bit more subtle, a bit more complex. Yeah. And it also, with that being said, it gives you a chance to um, appreciate cigars a bit more, I think. Um, 
you you know you you want to start with those cheaper cigars as you say to sit down with someone and go pepper yes get that chocolate yes get that yeah. uh this one's a little bit citrusy yes get that mm -hmm. and then the more experienced they become the more they will be able to appreciate and pick out flavors in a more complex more expensive cigar mm -hmm. um and if you want to go right back to basics, you don't want to hand someone a thirty-pound cigar and then chop half of it, yeah, half of it off, and then burn it all down one side, and completely yeah. destroy it. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> I I do know a young lady who every time I've smoked cigars with her, asked me which end am I supposed to cut again. <laughs> oh God. Bless oh God. <laughs> Did you want a name drop? No. <laughs> all right, let's move on. <laughs> So let me ask you this, if, if I was one of your buddies, well I am one of your buddies, but I'd like to think so. I'm one of your buddies who has never tried a cigar before. Okay. And I say to you, John, I'd like to, I'd like to try my first cigar. And you say, okay, let's go to the shop. What would, what would the, or what would you advise? Oh, that's a good question. So you take me into the humidor and I pick up a cigar. Yeah. I think go back even further than that. Right? So let's assume I'm not with the person. Mm -hmm. and somebody comes to me sitting over dinner, right, at Buckingham Palace. As I often do. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. Some, somebody leans over the table to me, Jude Law or whoever. Right? Yeah. And uh, he's like, John Bud, nice to see you again. <laughs> you know. It was that last time we were on that yacht? Yeah, yeah you're right, Jude, it was. It was. <laughs> uh, I said, that's, that, you know, that new hair transplant you had, looking pretty good, buddy. Oh, God. It's almost... Uh, it's almost unnoticeable, ish. Um, and he went out and obviously once the buddy buddy jibes had finished, Jude Law would turn around to me and he'd say, "Look, bud, I want to try some cigars. Yeah. What do you recommend? What should I do?" Mm. In that kind of situation, I'd say, "Jude, mate, look, we've known each other a long time. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> be led. Go to a quality cigar shop." For, and I know we've been debates about buying online and that sort of stuff, right? And that's great for later on. If you develop into smoking more cigars, mm. I'm sure you're going to get loads of benefit from buying things online. But when you're buying your first ones, pick a quality cigar lounge or shop near you if you can, or travel, and be led by a good specialist. Mm. Go in and say, oh, look, I don't really smoke cigars. I'd like to try something. This is my budget, for example. Yeah. What have you got that's good? And I think you you can make up for a lot of gaps in knowledge by being led by people who know what they're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Because in the same places, you'll often get or get past a lot of the other problems as well. They'll go, would you like us to pre-cut these for you? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you go in and get led, Cuban, non-Cuban, where it doesn't really matter, ask them what's good, have them explain it. And cigar people love to talk about cigars. They do. You'll go in there with a 10 minute window in your day, come out an hour late for a meeting because you've been in there ages <laughs> and you'll get taught some stuff. Yeah. I, I, I would, that would be my first tip. Go to a cigar shop and annoy the guy behind the counter. So there's nothing wrong with going into a store and asking for advice? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I learned so much from that. From, mm. from going in, dropping in for cigars and making some time on a, on a Saturday to waste mm. some time in there. And either get talked at, because that's easy to do in a cigar shop, yeah. they'll bore you to death all day, yeah. but, or ask some questions and get them answered. Mm. So what would you say to someone who says, oh, I've tried cigars before? Ah. And you say, oh, what cigars were they? And they say, I don't know, I was at a wedding, yeah. uh, my friend pulled them out of his jacket pocket, and I hated it. Yeah, I'd say stop just smoking really cheap <laughs> King Edwards that someone brought back from France. I think of <laughs> inside joke there from podcast yeah, number two. two. So when I first started smoking cigars, I was always a little bit scared of going back in the shop. Mm -hmm. I felt a little bit of pressure almost to remember the name of the cigar and everything about it. You know, I would go in the shop and VJ would go, oh, how was the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I'll go, uh, good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, it kind of, I kind of didn't want to let him down by saying, I don't really know 
what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I guess that would be the second thing I would say. So, tip one was go and buy cigars from somewhere where people could help you. Specialist, around. yeah. And then if you have the option to do so, smoke them with people. Yeah. Smoke them with somebody else. If purely to just get someone to bounce off on, mm. right? Either you smoke with someone who's used to smoking cigars and can help you out with what you're looking for, or, or maybe, you know, you, and we all know we don't always taste the same things, right? Yeah. Um, but maybe help nudge in the right direction, or mm. how to better enjoy it, and mm. retro hail once you get that far on, that kind of thing. Um, but you've got someone to bounce off, and it gives you that, that flavour thing. Yeah. You know, how many times have we sat there and one has said to the other, oh, citrus yeah and you go oh yeah that is what i can taste yeah exactly you know? but you don't know what you can taste until somebody puts that word in your head for you mm. that's the one thing i struggle with when i'm sitting here on my own doing reviews uh, i can taste something and i can't figure out for the life of me what it is uh and then when i upload the video and someone in the comments are like oh it was probably paprika and i'm like oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it's like if that person was there then with you in the room, you probably would have been able to enjoy that cigar even more mm -hmm. because you now know what you're tasting. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. I think some uh, some of the online cigar meets might be able to help people out with that kind of thing. They helped me out. The The online cigar meet that I'd done, I was having, uh, I think it was a Particus Majora number one. So I'm, I quite like a Particus Majora number one. Um, um, and one of the people who was watching, I was doing my usual thing. Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? And he goes, it's that. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, yeah. And it was something like orange citrus. And mm -hmm. I was like, that's so specific. Mm -hmm. It's a flavor that would typically stand out to you. But when you've got so many different things going on in a cigar and with what you're drinking, it, it does make it quite difficult to, to taste. Um, and with that being said, that also brings another question uh, as to when you are smoking a cigar or you're watching someone on, on a YouTube video or whatever and they say, I can taste chocolate mm -hmm. and wood and earth and hay and whatever else. <clears throat> I think uh, as a beginner cigar smoker, I would wonder when when you say you're smoking a cigar and you can taste chocolate, is it like eating a bar of chocolate? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. And that's where I think training your palate comes in, mm. right? So when, um, I always like to liken this to wine, often, yeah. as you know. And if you look at people who taste wine professionally, in the UK people will do like, uh, what's another W set, right? The Wines and Spirits Education Trust. Mm -hmm. And you would go and learn about different great varieties and, and there's different levels you can get to a diploma. And yeah. the other side of the coin, is uh, the Guild of Sommeliers. Okay. And sommelier, if, if you don't know, is the guy whose job it is to pair wine with food in a restaurant. Right? Yeah. So if you go to a nice restaurant in town, there's a guy whose entire job it is to bring you the wine and discuss it with you. That guy is the sommelier. Okay. And wine is his life. And what those people tend to do, they taste wine all the time, all day, every day, but they'll also find flavours. You'll, you'll see these people go to markets and pick up the bananas and sniff them. Yeah. and go and find some raspberries and squash them and taste that and just to have that in your mind all mm. the time and it, it, it builds up that connection that olfactory sense we spoke about a couple of podcasts yeah. about linking it back to something mm. um, so in some cases yes it is like tasting biting into a chocolate bar yeah. but there's varieties of that mm. I, well, I went to a gin tasting quite recently and the guy um, was telling me about how he tasted orange. Yeah. But also people were saying lemon and grapefruit, but his palate was obviously somewhere in the middle of the two. Okay. With the level of acidity. Yeah. Which you put his palate in the middle and somewhere in terms of acidity, which kind of makes my point for me, is that some people were tasting lemons, some were tasting grapefruits, and this guy was tasting orange. Mm. And Obviously, with everyone's taste buds and palates being slightly different, the level of acidity in that particular glass of gin was linking his olfactory senses back to a slightly different memory, albeit very close to everybody else's uh -huh. in that way, in that citrus palate, citrus range. Uh, and I guess that's the answer to your question. Is it like tasting a chocolate bar? Yes, sometimes they are that strong. Mm. Sometimes it's notes of that. Okay. 
-hmm. Sometimes you kind of got to understand that there's a little chocolate and there's a little pepper, somewhat herbaceous notes in some cases. Have you just had a bit of a relight there and there? Yeah, blimey, I've just relit it and it's it's given me an explosion of something and I'm not sure what it was. Very oaky. Really? Yeah. Let me go back for some more. Let's see how you get on. Mm. Put that band to one side for later. <coughs> right to the back of the throat. So I'm still trying to pick out the whiskey. Earlier on, I had a little bit on the aftertaste, yeah. retro hail, but I thought with what I've read online, uh, the conversation we had with Ross in the uh, cigar lounge in Windsor, yeah. I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to stand out a little bit more. To me, this is a, this is one of your typical leathery, woody non-Cubans. Uh I think you're there. Uh, so, I, I don't think the flavour of whiskey is dominant. It's quite leathery. There's oakiness in there. Yeah. Even cedar, maybe. It's got more of a piney feel to it than it has mm. oak. Um, kind of a sticky wood flavour. Yeah. Almost sweet. Tennis um, balls. Tennis balls. <laughs> uh, but the whiskey's there for me, but it's there more in kind of mouth feel. Mm. It's got that, like I said, the little shot of whiskey feel um, and just the edges of the flavour yeah it's there I think it's consistently there for me but it is dominantly non-Cuban general tobacco yeah taste. and I think that I think that speaks for itself is this going to break into your top three no it's not a cheap cigar no <laughs> And it's not, it's not wowing me. Uh, it's not top three. Compare this to the Korea that we had the other day. £15 cigar. This is double the price. Yeah. Um, is it worth it? It's not a £30 stick. But at the same time, that's not a bad cigar. Mm. Like, if you put the price point aside, do I like it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, I do quite like it. Um, I like it as much as the Korea. Yeah. For different reasons. Uh -huh. um, there's nothing bad about it. Uh, but I think it's because I went into it open-minded. Yes. Not knowing what to expect. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I'd get really full-on whiskey or whether it'd be subtle. I mean, it is quite subtle and I quite like that. Mm. See, I had... Last year I tried absinthe-infused cigars. Okay. And I forget how much they were. I was, I was sent them uh, by someone online. I think they were retailing at like $13 online. Okay. And... I opened the package and it smelt so bad. Right. Okay, but when I lit this thing up, it was really nice. Mm -hmm. And it really shocked me. And is this going to be a memorable, memorable cigar for me? I don't think it is. Um, there's, nothing, there's nothing really jumping out about it. No, it doesn't light me on fire. But I don't want to do it a disservice. I like what they've done. Mm. It's like I say about non-Cubans all the time, is they have the freedom to experiment. Yes. And I like that they have, and I don't dislike it. But is it a top three cigar? No. No. Not really. No. Not really. Um, so just knocking us back onto what we were talking about. Yeah. Beginners and things they should look out for, or mm. say five tips. Mm. Uh, so, so far we've said, um, go to a specialist and get some advice. Smoke with people. In fact, that probably leads me onto a pretty key third point. If you can attend a cigar event, mm -hmm. attend a cigar event. Yeah. This one's probably a bit of a ballsy move, but if you have randomly out of nowhere decided you're going to start smoking cigars for no reason other than that you want to, I'd, I'd say this is probably right in your wheelhouse, so just just try it. Yeah. Um, I think we spoke about this on the first podcast, but one of the first full-on Cubans that I enjoyed with you was at a cigar event in winter. Mm. And it was very eye-opening. Yeah. Because I, I think I told this, definitely told a story on the first one, but I'll fly through it now. Is I sat there in a bit of a lulling conversation and said, look, while we've got everyone here, guys from all different walks of life, mm. enjoy cigars at different levels. Can you all tell me something that I should know as a, someone who's new to cigars? Yeah. That was quite valuable to mm. me, I mm. think. And you get to see 
one of the things it did tell me, despite all the nice, interesting tips everybody gave me, because everyone was quite forthcoming and friendly, was to the wealth and breadth of the types of people that smoke cigars. Yes. And you get to understand that it's perhaps not necessarily what you thought it was in the first place. It's not in a negative way, mm. but if you attach it to a particular type of lifestyle or whatever, that's not the case. Yeah. It, there's, there's more than just that guy who you're thinking of. I think cigars. the outsider looking in is thinking of an old man with uh, a leather armchair and a bookshelf behind him. Yeah. Who makes millions a year. Almost, yeah, some family guy character. <laughs> yeah. So one of my favourite tips so far is smoking with other people. Yeah. And that obviously ties into going to a cigar event. Um, for me as well, you know, as we spoke about earlier on, if you're struggling to taste something... Bring it up, someone yeah. will tell you, and you can kind of recognize it. Mm-hmm. In turn, allowing you to enjoy the cigar even more. Smoking with other people for the company, that can be quite enjoyable. Um, yesterday, whilst we were in Windsor, I was thinking about one of the cigar events we went to, and we had that guy, Lewis? The guy who'd done the Winston Churchill impression? Uh, Alex. Alex. Yeah on the music and he went through an entire Winston Churchill speech and it was hilarious and yeah. amazing yeah. and it's just not the sort of thing you get at home or oh, no it wasn't Winston Churchill it was because we the cigar night we went to was pre uh, a New Year's event a New Year's event yeah and what he did was a Robert Burns poem it why was I Churchill. thinking Winston Churchill because the second event we went to that same place was Churchill night ah oh, that was the one okay alright the, the one that, that Alex did was uh, a Bobby Burns poem uh, of mice and you, you ever the book of mice yeah, and yeah, yeah. it's named after a Robert Burns poem Scottish yeah Scottish I think the phrase is the, from the, the, the chorus of the poem if you like someone's going to murder me for using the word chorus but that's not what I meant um, <laughs> is the best laid plans of mice and men gang mm. after glee which is that's it uh, I'm not going to say Gaelic it's not Gaelic it's, it's Scottish yeah um, in, the, in the purest of senses and gang after glee means often go wrong and that's how that discussion discussion launched off in that particular <laughs> cigar event. I remember it, uh, but yeah, good point. That was amazing. Yeah, but there you go. That leads back into something we were talking about about smoking with other people. We spoke about this. Mm. Uh, definitely, we talked about this recently. Is that it links links to memories? That's the point. Yes. It's, yeah. It's not having a cigarette in passing. It's it's enjoying a cigar mm. for that moment for, yeah. for what's going on. So yeah, that definitely. That, there you go. It, it does exactly that. Mm. You remember the times. Mm. Make it an enjoyment by smoking with other people. Going back to this cigar we're smoking very quickly, I got a little bit of whiskey again on the retro hail. Okay. It's fading in and out for me right. on this cigar. But for the most point for the most part, it's it's just like an earthy cigar. Yeah. For me. I'm not really getting much else from it and I'm I'm right down to the band now. I thought there was going to be a little bit more of something I, I think I'm gonna so I'm, I'm just past the halfway point on this yeah. cigar um, and it, it's definitely intensified as they all do as they warm up mm. but I've got a little hunch go on because what I think this needs is something sweet I love a hunch I think it needs to pair with something sweet yeah I, I've just seen there's someone's gonna kill me for pairing this there's a bottle of rum here yeah and I'm gonna pour a little bit of rum I'm going to see, because this Havana Club is quite a sweet one. Yeah. I love the smell of this stuff. We'll give it a spin. It's, oh, that's, it's like Christmas cake. <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. It's really sweet cherries and that kind of stuff, this rum. That leads me on to something else, actually. A lot Can I of interest people... you in a little? Oh, tumble? absolutely. Yeah, fill that glass up. I actually better not. I've got to drive. Have a little one. Wonderful. There you go, Chief. Cheers. Can you reach that one? Yeah. Um... People talk about it all the time. Pairing your cigar with, whether it's a snack or a drink, can intensify the flavours yeah. of a cigar and it will help open up open up your palate. Okay. So let's let's see. I'm not sure rum is the... We were advised sparkling water. Yeah, we've been given a lot of advice, but I think this one is personal preference and experimentation. Yep. So sparkling water does work with some cigars. It definitely works... If you're concentrating on a particular cigar, if you bought it because it has a particular characteristic yeah. and you want, you really want to try that, try it with some sparkling water because it helps clear the palate between, mm. 
between inhales. You can retaste and retaste. I'm just gonna. This is smooth. This is the seven year, I believe. Ah, that goes beautifully. <laughs> ah, yes. A little bit of sweetness to counteract the slight bitterness. I win again. Okay. It's nice having a cigar that's not peppery for once. A lot of these non-Cubans that we've been having are yeah. straight pepper. A little bit acrid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, pairing. I guess we can call this another tip. If you're... The way we did it, and I think we might have stumbled across a good method, is when we first started to smoke cigars fairly frequently, we used to go to a shop and grab bunches of stuff. Snack wise. Snack wise. Yeah. So I I do definitely remember at your old studio, mm. which was your living room. Yes. Um, had the wonderful brown sofa in the background. It had the brown sofa. It had the uh, slightly yellowing walls <laughs> that your landlord those. would never fix. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, put a light box in there and everyone because it's a pro studio. So <laughs> away we go. So I remember being sat there with chocolates of different varieties, coffee. Um, coffee beans, I think we did once. Yeah. Um, cheese board, uh -huh. olives. Uh, we had wine, and this was all on the one day. Yeah. I remember doing this. Uh, I think that was a, was a white wine. That Chardonnay that you absolutely love. Do you remember the one I'm talking about? There was one called the Gun. Yes. I love that That's stuff. Not, is it a Chardonnay or is it a Pinot? Chardonnay. It is a Chardonnay. I believe. Yeah. 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 That particular bottle of wine was there, and it it made it really easy to figure out pairing because mm. pairing to me should be obvious yeah. once you stumble across it. It's like, it's like when somebody first says to you peanut butter and jam sandwich and you go, well, yeah. And then you bite it and you go, Oh yeah. I see why you do that. I love that. Yeah. Cause you've got yeah. the sticky, almost saltiness of the peanut butter mm. and the crunchy kind of protein feel and then sweet jam or jelly. And it complements each other really nicely, and it becomes obvious the minute you take the first bite. Mm. And that's what pairing should be like. Yeah. So if you're new to it and you want to think about pairing things, put some stuff in front of you. Yeah. Get a spirit, get a wine, get a coffee, get a tea, get a couple of types of chocolate, get some food, get some savoury snacks, maybe even crisps or chips or mm. little pork rind scratchings or nuts or whatever. Yeah. And work through those with a single cigar. And you'll start to, if you start with a sparkling water trick, but I'm going to call this probably John the Camp's favourite tip of the day. If you start with the sparkling water thing and you can consistently taste in the first third of the cigar what it is you think you're looking for by mm. clearing the palate with some sparkling water, then start sampling things to go along with it. Mm. The thing that goes with it will be immediately obvious, Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, uh, of the more bitter cigars that we've had where the... 2002 Diplomatico rum. Yes. That honestly, it it just makes the cigar. Yeah. Because too much of one thing, mm -hmm. it just gets a little bit boring. You get a little bit sick of it. But if you can sip on something or snack on something to take away the bitterness, it can. It allows you to appreciate the bitterness from the, like maybe it's a bitter coffee or something from the cigar. Yeah, it highlights individual characteristics of other things. It's like tea and biscuits. Absolutely. Oh god! I had a chocolate hobnob earlier on today. Plain chocolate, uh, sorry, plain hobnob. Do you have the hobnobs with the chocolate chips? Do you have the hobnobs mm -hmm. with the chocolate all the way over the top? Today I had chocolate chip hobnobs. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'd never had them before. I've had a normal hobnob. Yeah. I've had a chocolate covered hobnob. <laughs> is this a real conversation? <laughs> but I what think, I had today was a chocolate chip. Hobnob. I think it is actually. I I do enjoy the chocolate chip. I see why, because they're like, I was, I was eating a hobnob, mm. and I forgot I was eating a chocolate, chocolate chip hobnob, <laughs> right? I'm just crunching away on the OT biscuity goodness, and I went, ooh, that's the chocolate in there. <laughs> I'm having a moment now. So, but going back to flavours and, and, and pairing. I'm not right? done, I'm not finished with hobnobs. <laughs> <laughs> so... Another, one, another good example that springs to mind is we were at um, the hospital club in Covent Garden. Yes. Um, with Alan. And he kind of epitomised this for me of how sometimes things just go together and you stumble across them and it works nicely. And it was an old-fashioned 
cocktail, yeah. which is usually a whiskey cocktail, mm. with Diplomatico rum in the 2002. And it was amazing. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. And the 2002 is, if you've never had it, guys, you should try it. it, it it's rum, obviously, but it's, it's rum on steroids. It is a fairly high proof rum, to be fair, mm. but it's incredibly smooth, incredibly mellow, quite sweet subtle it's like silk yeah it's fantastic for for a rum spirit uh for spirits in general it's up there mm. it's probably my favorite spirit i think yeah um and it's about 100 pound a bottle yeah turns out i've got expensive tasting rum i guess <laughs> i don't know uh, you get what you pay for i'm gonna get do you know what i haven't tried that, that is right in there that I'm, i would love to try is the different ago 96 yeah um but the last one I saw of those sold at auction for 600 quid. So, uh, it's a little bit steep. Yeah. I haven't yet been to anyone's house who's busting it out over dinner. <laughs> so if, but if anyone listener who's got a bottle of 96 Diplomatico and they want to share some <laughs> and you're making dinner, do leave us a comment. Mm. Um, but that kind of makes my point is that experimenting with stuff like that. Yeah. Across great pairings and, mm. and pairings are very personal and they're all about experimentation. Yeah. And you don't have to spend the earth. To be able to pair your cigar with things. No, you like really you say, don't. it can be a hobnob. A hobnob, yeah. Or some sparkling water. Oh, that's another one I want people to comment. If you know a cigar that goes well with hobnobs, you leave us a comment. We'll <laughs> do a fair, podcast I all think about it. Hobnobs go with anything. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> if, 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 anyway, if someone could suggest a cigar that goes with hobnobs, you probably will do an entire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> with all the different line of hobnob. Yeah. I, I think there's foreigners listening to this going, what is a hobnob? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So if you're not from England, uh, a hobnob is a is a biscuit uh, or a cookie. Uh, if if you're American, and they're like an an oat based, quite substantial sweet biscuit that come in a number of varieties. And if you could buy them on the internet, they don't sell them in your country. Make sure you import some; they'll change your life. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking four grams of fat per biscuit. Oh yeah, they're a they're a substantial little snack. Mm, mm. Um, and you can eat the entire packet with one cup of tea. True. <sighs> yeah, the little hobnob moment. I'll tell you what. This brings me on to probably the last tip. One of five. Five of five. Five of five. Don't be afraid to share your thoughts and opinions with what you're tasting, what you might enjoy having with a cigar. Uh, I think that's probably, if you had to make that a concise tip, I'd say enjoy your cigar. Yeah. Of all the things you've said so far, tip number five, as cliche as it could possibly be, enjoy it. Yeah. Don't get drawn into the pomposity of cigars. Yes. You're, you don't have to have a smoking jacket mm. or live in the Playboy Mansion. Yes. Or be British. Mm. Hashtag hobnobs. Hashtag hobnobs. <laughs> to, to really appreciate cigars. Yeah. They are for you what they are for you. You have your own moment with them. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's one thing. When I started smoking cigars, I was always worried about what people would think about what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, how I smoke cigars, why I smoke cigars, when I smoke cigars. And when I started uploading YouTube reviews, a bit about me was like, oh, but what if... I'm saying isn't right. Yeah, that's the easy trap to fall into, isn't it? And you do get people saying, oh, those cigars are not bitter coffee, they're this, they're that. But like, mm -hmm. I think it all does come down to personal opinion. Yeah. If you enjoy a hobnob with your cigar, fine. Who am I to judge? True. Very but true. there are these people who stay within their circle and they all just agree with what each other is saying. I, I, I mean, that's, guess what I mean about the pomposity of cigars. Mm. It's not just cigars, it's anything where, you, you know, Anything of the class. Yeah, or perceived to be luxury yeah. in that sense as a, as a consumable product. I, I fear that people are worried that they'd be considered less expert in the subject if they deviate from what's accepted. Yeah. So if you're sitting there tasting a, a Chardonnay and on the back of the bottle it says, it tastes like grapes, <laughs> or whatever the case may be, and it's dry and you know it's got a hay background to it and, and undernotes, and you go, oh, well, actually, I can taste fresh grass and tennis balls. <laughs> then there, people might go, well, no, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Or, yeah. I think the perception is you're worried that people mm. think you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. But actually, that, to use another concise British term, is bollocks. Mm. 
Because you taste what you taste. It's yeah. like I was just explaining about the guy at the gin tasting I went to. Some people in the room were tasting lemons, some citrus orange, and some grapefruit. Mm. All right, granted, that's not a very wide <laughs> band or net to cast, but they were different, is exactly. my point, by, by palate. Yeah. Another interesting one to bear in mind here is we did another uh, little test at this gin tasting. And you can get these um, they're little litmus paper, pieces of paper. Right? Oh. They're used usually for like food technology courses and stuff like that and there are a little test and you put the bit of paper on your tongue yeah and the instructor will ask you what can you taste and people will either go paper or they'll go Ugh. bitter yeah and it's a particular type of bitter chemical mm. that will define whether or not you're a super taster and not this makes you any kind of superhuman, you're just slightly more discerning and you're immediately better at picking out flavours. Because uh -huh. this is quite subtle bitter flavour to it, but to people with this super tasting ability, if you will, it's immediately obvious. Yeah. But that just, I had a room of maybe 15 people when we did this, straight down the middle, half and half. Uh -huh. Some tasted extreme bitter, some were like paper. Uh -huh. So to have one person in the comment of a video or generally at you go, no, no, that doesn't taste like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's different for sure. Everyone's so, palates are different. Enjoy the process. Yeah, I taste what you taste, and if you yeah. enjoy that, smoke that cigar again. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> That's how that works. Mm. Some other comments that I I used to receive is, uh, why don't you finish your cigars? Yeah. You know, I used to. Well, sometimes I still do. I'll smoke down to the band, and I'll I'll call it a day. Yeah. Um, and I'm a believer in when you've finished enjoying your cigar, or when you become sick of it not not literally sick of it but when you just get a little bit i don't know you just finish yeah you just exactly. think i've had enough now yeah. put it down you don't have to nub a cigar every single time it might start to burn a little bit too hot you might as i say just get a little bit tired of it yeah just put it down yeah and, we, and you and i've always been quite opposite on this mm. yeah i know you'll 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 finish when you're finished yeah maybe to say the band is a bit specific but mm. you'll get to a point and go yes dump yeah. I'm done with that. I'm finished my enjoyment of that cigar. Mm. And I tend to nub a cigar 99 times out of 100. Yeah. But I enjoy that whole yeah. process at the end. I quite like, not the heat, but everything that comes with it. Yeah. The final, if I'm liking a cigar right the way through, then the odds are I will like the absolute intensity of that cigar at the yeah. end. So I tend to go right to the point where I'm pinching a little bit of the wrapper so I don't burn my fingers. Yeah. You've got one of those little... Cocktail sticks in. Yeah, yeah. They were. I still yet to find good ones of those. Well. Yeah. Um, somebody, uh, I forget who it was, probably not anyone important, showed us um, little sword shaped ones. Yeah. Which I thought was a fantastic idea, but mm. I've never actually seen them on the market. Mm. And for guys who don't know what I'm talking about, the idea of these little devices is they're usually a cocktail stick type implement, but a bit more permanent, little sharp implement that you can stab into the cigar right at the end, at, yeah. the, at the smoking end, at the business end, and avoid burning your fingers while you smoke a cigar right to the nut. Yeah. Um, which I think is a great idea. Great idea. Something that I would, I, I'm not sure I would ever really do. Because even now, the cigar, you know, it's got such a short distance for that smoke, for that heat to yeah. reach your tongue. Yeah. You do have to look, be a little bit careful because it can just straight burn your tongue. It can be overly intense. It can be for me. Um, which is simply why I don't usually smoke them all the way down. But with that being said, I'm continuing to smoke this. I'm I'm enjoying it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, why? I'm not really sure, to be honest. There's Like I said earlier, there's still nothing jumping out at me. I am deep into the final third of the cigar. Would I spend that amount of money on this cigar again? Probably not. Not in a hurry. No, I wouldn't turn one down. Mm. Um, but for the price point, I wouldn't smoke them every day. Uh, no. Um, but I am enjoying them. I, I think what I like about them is the subtlety. Mm. They're a cigar. Yeah. They're clearly a non-Cuban cigar. Uh, that subtle whiskey, I like what they did there. Yeah. It's clever. I've had a little bit on and off. It's been it's been more consistent than not for me. We had a comment, by the way. Okay. From a viewer slash listener. And it was mostly directed at me for always going back to the prices of cigars yeah. and how you shouldn't worry about the price of a cigar. Okay. You should just enjoy it for what it is. 
Yeah. But for me, and I think for beginner cigar smokers, the price of a cigar is quite a big factor. Agreed. Because if it's something you want to do on a daily or weekly basis, it's something to take into account. When you're spending 15 to £30 on a cigar, it adds up. Yeah. It becomes a four or £500 a month outgoing. Just for a hobby, essentially. Agreed. Uh, uh, and I can kind of see, you know, without context, it's hard to say what that person was definitely getting at. But I see what they're getting at. Mm. Don't hang up too much on price. And we don't. No. We, we definitely don't. But we discuss it because it's a, it matters to people. Yeah. It matters to most people. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and value for money is no matter who you are. It's important. Yeah, no, I it is. It is. It's, it's, it, I don't think we can ever smoke a stick on the YouTube channel or this podcast and not at least touch on what it costs mm. for us. Yeah. And the comparison across the world. Yeah, definitely. Because it's key. Yeah, no, it really is. It really is. So how are you finding the, the, the entire cigar experience with this particular cigar? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It didn't change much uh, for me. I... I I thought that. Good balance, consistency. Yep. Yeah, it was definitely a leathery, woody, non-Cuban, and I like the extra dimension that subtle bit of whiskey adds to mm. it. I think as an overall cigar, it balances well. I like yeah. it, and it was quite consistent throughout the stick. Mm. Uh, last third here as I am now, enjoyable for sure. Yeah. Wouldn't smoke one every day, wouldn't turn one down again. No. Uh, and like I said earlier on, I'm, I'm deep into the final third now, and I am still enjoying the cigar, where typically I would have put it down by now. Um, but no, it's been a good cigar, Definitely not taking anything away from my top three. No, not yet. But again, open to suggestions. Exactly. We, we've had a few here and there. Yeah. Um, but I suppose we should uh, close out. Should we wrap it up? I think so. Wrap. <laughs> wrap it up. Let me just... I don't want to end. Let's just do a five-hour podcast. Okay. Should we bust the humor door out? Yes, well... It's right here. Should we see what we can dive into? <laughs> We've got one. We're, we're running out of podcast time, but we can Instagram live stream it. Let's see how many cigars we can smoke in a row. <laughs> we'll finish this bottle of rum. Oh, God. We'll be in for the entire weekend. I suppose we better close that podcast. So mm. where can people find us, Jed? Well, this podcast will be available on the London Cigar Podcast channel. It'll also be available on Spotify. So if you're not watching the footage or at least listening to it at your convenience. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you haven't gone and uh, followed already, please go and take a look at the Cigars of London Instagram page. Mm. Uh, and if you are interested in seeing more of my background life, I'm at John the Cat on Instagram. The dog, more importantly. Or more importantly, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's on there quite a lot. All right, so to all of our listeners, thank you very much if you've made it this far. For anyone watching the podcast on the channel, we appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe and leave any cigar suggestions in the comment box. Look forward to it. See you guys next week.